What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Pat, once again. And, you know, I've been seeing a lot of these videos on YouTube about uh, childhood trauma. And uh, I'm not a follower per se, but I thought it was a really good idea. So I thought, you know what, hey, let me go into my past, my childhood, for your entertainment. I'm going to open myself up so you can look inside. Wait, that sounded kind of weird. Look, basically, what I mean is we're going to have some fun making fun of me, childhood me. All right, so my top 10 childhood trauma, and here we go. Okay. Coming in at number 10 is Tombstone. When they were talking about, you know, death and the Antichrist and and all of that, it really freaked me out, you know. There was this scene where the actress was on stage playing the devil and making people sign contracts with the devil and dancing. It was just weird. But the one scene that got to me was the, uh, the scene with Kurt Russell standing outside with the blood dripping down his arms and his hands and he's just yelling at everybody. It was just... It really freaked me out. Though, make no mistake, Tombstone is now and forever and then my John. And coming in at number nine, Tales from the Crypts. I mean, this was obviously supposed to be kind of a humorous show, but that winding way through the darkness, you know, uh, around the stairs that led up to this long table and at the end of the table popped up the skeleton guy with that laugh that <laughs> I can't do it but you know what I mean coming in at number seven we have the first Furbies you know, when they first came out in like mid to late 90s or something like that. I was of the age group that should have flipped out to, to get them, right? Nah. I took one look at these these things and nah, nah, I just, nah. <laughs> they reminded me too much of Magua. You know, those things that turned into the gremlins? Yeah. No thanks. And they talk to you? Mm -mm, nah, mm -mm, nope, Bill. So, speaking of Gremlins, yeah, number six, Gremlin. Listen, remember that part where you saw the other things pop out of the Magua back, the skin? Yeah, that freaked me out. I was physically creeped out. Number five. New Jersey Aquarium commercial. I think it was New Jersey Aquarium. I'm not sure, and I looked for it the best that I could using Google and uh, YouTube, but uh, okay, since I couldn't find it, I I'm gonna try to explain it to you. There was this commercial for an aquarium, might have been New Jersey Aquarium, uh, and it was promoting going there and visiting. There was a mom who was talking to her son and the son was in the bathroom in a whole nother room taking a bath I guess it wasn't a shower I don't think um and she was talking to him and all of a sudden silence then you heard the gurgling sounds of the drain emptying then the mom calls for the son again no answer from him came it was like he disappeared was he attacked by a shark was he sucked through the drain and taken to the aquarium? Is that how you get into the aquarium? I don't want to go to the aquarium. This whole kid is missing and they want me to go to an aquarium. <sighs> no. So anyway, I know that was weird. If you could find that commercial to let me know that I'm not crazy, I didn't make that up. Number four. Okay, so Young Frankenstein, Igor in particular. No, the actor, Martin Feldman. Okay, no, just his eyes. Well, not just his eyes. Hear me out. 
So this one may be the dumbest one on my list, but it it is true nonetheless. So the actor, Marty Feldman, had like misaligned eyes, okay? Whatever, he was still a talented British actor, funny all around, right? Uh, but his eyes resembled the the knobs on the ceiling fan that was in my mom's room and sometimes I would sleep uh, in her bed when I was a kid. And so to me, the knobs resembled his eyes when they would pop out uh, of his face and uh, it would only happen at night and only in the dark. You know, round about the time a young scared kid would have to go to bed. Yeah, perfect timing in that. Number three on the list, if you're still with me, thank you for listening. Um, Ghostbusters. <laughs> Not the whole movie, because we all know that is a classic movie, but uh, the particular part, wait. Spoilers, I guess? Okay, so the particular part where all the dead things came back to life, right? And the Titanic unsunk, and the ghosts were walking around. There was this one shot of a lady who had like an animal fur shawl around her around her shoulders, and it came back to life, y'all. And it kind of jumped off her and scurried away. Ah, uh, no, no, oh my dang, no. Ah, uh, why? Just why? Why would you? Why would you? Why would you make me see that with my eyes? Number two is another music one. Uh, we have Screamin' Jay Hawkins. This guy was a singer, true to his name, Screaming. He had a staged look that was just weird. It was part tribal, part, I don't know, voodoo, tribal. He had 50 million kids with like 20 different wives, girlfriends, I don't even know. He apparently was like the, the Wilt Chamberlain of, of singers, man. Anyway, but his song, the version of, uh, of uh, I Put a Spell on You, scared the crap out of me. It was his voice. His voice wasn't raspy, but it was strong. And like, it almost sounded like he could kill you with his voice. Uh, like I said, the bone through the nose, the, the, the crazy eyes, the screaming that he would do. He was kind of metal, actually for his full disclosure. I could see his face when I closed my eyes and for some reason he made me scared to while while taking a shower like he was somehow watching. I mean, I know by then he had to be dead, right? Number 1, we've made it through talking about me and my weirdness as a child, which is slightly different than my weirdness as an adult. <laughs> Number 1 is Unsolved Mysteries. Ah, my mother watched this show so much when I was a kid. Now I could understand the meaning of reenactment of the crimes, and so I knew that part wasn't real. But still, it got to me, you know? Then, the actor probably known for either hosting this show or playing Elliot Ness in The Untouchables back in the day, Robert Stack. He had this voice that even now I can't explain how it was or what it was, but it creeped me out. It was scary. And then the theme music. Uh, still, there must be some sort of subconscious connection that song, that theme song, has to my childhood because on not so scary days, or whatever day, it could still just give me the willies. Ugh, if you haven't heard that song, get kind of creeped out. So that was 10 of childhood trauma on list <laughs> of me. This has been Pat. Actually, I'm gonna come back with another list called Childhood Triumph. When I talk about things that inspired me, that, 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 that got me smiling, got me laughing, a little bit brighter side of this, list and maybe you know you can have a more full view of what it was to be me as a child if not thank you for listening